Welcome to the TAF Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by TAF Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the TAF Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Me, Fadi, some of you will know. I'm sure you know MFA Group. Yes, um, Fadi is a third generation of ownership. It was started by your father, your, your grandfather. And then his father took over the business, Michelle, who's about a year or two older than me. And now Fadi's running the show. So, um, uh, but he's going to talk about passion. So, uh, Fadi, the microphone is yours. Thank you. I am Gambian. Let's get that out of the way before the you know skin tone fools you guys. Um, my great grandfather came here in 1920, but I'm also Gambian at heart, Gambian by passion. Hence, I'm talking about passion, and that's one of the reasons I do. I, I'm doing this. So thank you for inviting me to, to talk here today. Um, I think all of you should be really, really privileged to be to be part of this leadership academy. Uh, it's one of those things that really. Uh, inspires me to be part of it too um, and you guys are not paying for this so this is something you guys should maximize and make use of um, let me start with by I, I read this quote once about passion and it says love what you do and you'll never have to work a day in your life right think about that if you love what you do you don't consider it work anymore okay so what is passion Anyone? Do we have a mic in the audience? Anyone want to try? What does passion mean? I'm the third speaker, so some of you have, you know, I've lost you guys. You're tired now, so let's wake you guys up. Anyone want to try? Passion is the desire or the ability to do something right. I didn't get the last bit. The desire to do? The desire and the ability to do something right. Something right? Yes. Okay. Well, let me start you off with, with where this word passion comes from. It comes from the root Latin. And in Latin, it means to suffer. Funny enough, right? In Latin, passion means to suffer. But in the context of suffering or sacrificing for something you love, that's what it really means. So passion is an emotion. And what do you know about emotions? Emotions change. Emotions come and go. Today you love football, next, next year you might be loving another sport, right? Today you like this team, tomorrow you like another team. I'm sure all of you are watching the World Cup, Football World Cup right now. Uh, so passion is something that is always evolving. It's never static and you can have multiple passions even at the same time. So keep that in mind. Passion is, a, is an emotion that goes and comes. Now, why is passion so important? When we talk about leadership and, and success, if you speak to most successful people or leaders in the world, you will always see that passion is one of the key ingredients <clears throat> sorry, to their success. Why is that? I'll give you some, some, some reasons. Passion is something that drives you, right? It drives you to wake up every morning, wake up so early, like Uncle Taft does. He's at 7 a.m., he's at Taft City. You wake up early because there's something you enjoy doing, right? I don't know how many of you wake up early here because something is, 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 is exciting you to get up. Um, passion drives you to continuously improve yourself. Okay? Uh, passion allows you to continue when things are getting tough. 
a lot of people give up, right? When things are tough, many of us just pack up and, and change and do something else. But when you're passionate about something, it's so difficult to give up. You continue. Passion shapes your why, your purpose. Why do you do what you do? I'll give an example about that, um, your why or meaning. Passion gives meaning and purpose to what you do. Um, let's take a masoner. If you see a masoner building blocks, you walk up to him and you ask him, hey, what do you do? And the simple answer he could give you is, I'm a masoner, what do you mean? I'm building blocks. I put block after block, cement, you know. And he's fully right, that's what he does. Walk to another masoner and ask him the same question. What do you do? You might get a different answer like this. I am building the most beautiful mosque or church in Gambia. What's the difference? They're both building blocks. One of them has a meaning to his work. One of them really loves what he does and he is connecting his task to something bigger than him. And that person, of course, you might have guessed, will wake up early and be more passionate about doing that job than the person who only sees himself as putting blocks on top of each other. Okay? Another reason passion is so important uh, to, for success is because passion is contagious. What does that mean? You ever hear people that are so passionate about something? I mean, prime example is Uncle Taf. When he speaks about something, you sit and listen. Most of us do. When somebody or, or, or important people or leaders, whether it's political, religious, or whoever they are, when they're so passionate and they're speaking about something, they capture your attention. What I mean by contagious is that it transfers to you. You're not bored, you're actually listening to them. And you want to be like them. You're inspired by them. You want to be part of their team. So passion is something very, very contagious when you do it. So if you're trying to get a bank loan, or you're trying to sell something, or marry someone, whatever you have, your idea, if you're passionate about it, most likely the other person will be convinced. Right? So keep that in mind. And passion allows you not to do the bare minimum. And, and I have to say this, in Gambia we see that a lot. A lot of people just want to do the bare minimum, right? My good friend Latir Kar wrote an article many, many years ago. Called, he called it a bare minimum nation. You can look it up somewhere online. Um, but you see people, for example, that have a job to do uh, from 8 to 5. They will just get there at 8, if that's if they're on time, and leave shop 5. Some of my own employees as well. You'll see them at 5 o'clock, before 5 even, they're packing up, ready to be out the door at 5 o'clock. Clearly, they're not passionate about what they're doing. Okay? Passion gives you that drive to do more than the minimum, to go that extra mile. And I'm going to give you, guys, a real-life example. A lot of examples I, I will share are from real life, things that have happened, whether at business or in, in my personal life. Uh, we used to have a sales lady called Yamundau at LG many, many years ago, and she was one of the best salespeople we've ever had, right? And one day Yamundau, but Yamundau was never looked at the clock, always was so passionate about what she was doing. She learned all the products, she knew everything, she served everybody, she was always standing up, never sat down, went the extra mile, never closed on time, and everyone wanted to talk to Yamundau, all, all our customers. And one day she walked into my office crying, she said, look, I have to leave. And simply because she loved the company so much, that's why she was crying, but she got an opportunity that is unbeatable. I, I couldn't match, so I was sad she was leaving, but happy for her, because she's developing, right? But why her? You know, I hear a lot of, a lot of people will say, ah, you defa look here, come on. No, she brought that to herself, because she was passionate about what she was doing. She was really serious about what she was doing, and the person who actually who gave her that offer was one of our top clients. And he was so impressed by the service she offered that gave her that offer. So you open doors to yourself once you're passionate about something. Okay? Now, passion, passion, passion. You hear people say, okay, well, what are you passionate about? Most of you are students here. Is everyone a student? UTG or less or more? Students? Yeah? I'm sure more, many of you don't know what you want to do in your life. Put your hand up if you don't know what you like. You're not, you're, you haven't found your passion yet. Put your hand up. Come on. Don't worry, you're not the only one. Most of you are confused about what you want to do. And it's fine. Most students, most, most students don't know what they like to do. Right? I remember um, 
when I first came back from uni, I, you know, I was very excited, you know, pumped up. You know, you get your degree and you think you're going to start applying your degree immediately without understanding the context. And of course, I had to learn from that experience. I used to ask this question to people who apply, what's your dream? And I would get blank faces most of the time. You know why? Because later on in life, as I learned, you cannot dream of what you cannot imagine. Let me repeat that. You cannot dream of what you cannot imagine. Why do I say that? Because you, can, you don't know what you know until you know it, in simple terms. So you don't know what you're going to like tomorrow. Or how I like to say, you don't know what you love until you find something you like. Now, question is, how do you find that? How do you find something you like or you're passionate about? How do you discover these things? Um, well, first of all, let's start by saying if you do the same thing every single day for the rest of your life, you're going to get the same thing. Do we agree on that? Yeah. You're not going to get anything new. You're not going to discover anything new. So what I tell people is try new things. The fact that you guys are here um, witnessing 12 people come, up, come on stage and talk to you and share their experience with you is an opportunity to learn new things and discover maybe passions that you may never knew you could, you could like. So the way to, to discover passion is not by looking for it. Just live life, but get out of your comfort zone, right? Go out there, meet people, read YouTube. These days, you YouTube things, Google. And, 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 and don't hang out with people who don't add value to your life. Let's start, let's start from there. Hang out with people who add value to your life because you may learn something new. Try new things, try cooking. Try, uh, I don't know, cleaning, sweeping at the house, as Mam Yasin said. Try that, try that. Try, try something new, sorry. And you may discover that you like it. And I'll share with you a, my story of, of, of chocolate in a bit. Um, and, and, and you'll see what I mean by that. And, I, and, and something else is be curious. Be curious. Ask questions. I mean, kids, kids are the most curious creatures on earth, right? Young kids. They ask you so many questions. Why that? What is that? Why does it do that? And even though you'd be tired, you know, you're driving and, okay, I'm tired to answer, but they're so curious and that's how they learn. That's how they, they discover things. So continue to ask yourself certain questions and be curious about life and what it, what it offers. You know, the secret, the secret of finding your passion is not looking for it. It's actually doing things, right? Um, and as I said earlier, you can have more than one passion at any point in your life. Now, passion alone is not enough to make you a great leader or make you successful. I've seen people, I've seen, I've seen some people be so passionate about something, including myself, where you come up with this idea and you're so crazy about it, you can't sleep because you're so excited about it. And then sometimes you find yourself not listening to others. And that's, that's not good. As a great leader, you must listen to others. Even though you may have the final decision about what you want to do, but listen to others. So a lot of passionate people tend, sometimes don't listen to other people's advice. Or let me say, they lose touch with reality because they're so focused into something new that they lose touch of, of, of reality. So listen to others, but also passion without discipline and work ethic is a waste of time. You're not going to get anywhere with it, right? Every successful leader who's passionate about something and made it uh, into something bigger, has discipline and an amazing work ethic, okay? And knowledge, skills. Um, uh, uh, Uncle Taf always talks about skills, apprenticeship. You have to do your homework. You have to add knowledge to yourself. You have to be skilled at something. Today you find a passion that you're, you're, you're excited about, but okay, are you going to be good at it? Let's say you're passionate about football, but you don't know how to play. What do you do? Go on practice, right? I'll share with you guys a true story. I call it the back way story. This really happened in real life. I'm not making this up. I get, I, I get home one day. I had, um, I had a contractor doing some tiling, tiling work for us. And I get home and, you know, every time the boss leaves, a lot of the people working, I don't know, attire, the attire starts. They don't want to work. Many, many of them, right? Not everyone, but most people just, you know, get lazy when the boss leaves. So one day I get home and I see one of them on the phone. 
really excited, really loud. You know, Mona, yeah, man, yeah, inshallah, man. Then I find your man, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so I let him finish and I asked him, so what's up? Like, you see, really excited about something. Clearly, he has a passion for something. He was very hyped up. He said, yeah, I'm talking to my brother, an Italy man. Yeah, inshallah, then for them, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, first of all, why are you speaking to me like a Jamaican? I'm speaking all of an English to you. Choose one. But no, I, I mean, who's Jamaican in this equation? Nobody. Okay, let's start from there. This is a true story. He said he wants to go to Italy and meet his brother. And I said, how are you going to get there? The back way, he said, yeah, inshallah. I said, you, you are very stupid. Sorry, I don't, know. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that. There's a camera here, but sorry. Sorry. I speak my mind sometimes. So, but that's actually, actually what I told him. And he got upset. Why are you saying that? I said, sit down. Let me tell you why. He sat down and I said, okay. You want to go to the back way? Fantastic. Good idea. You're very passionate about it. Um, you were using WhatsApp on your phone, yeah? He said, yeah. I said, you, I looked at his phone. It's an Android phone. And I know there's a Google map on his phone. I said, do you know what a map is? No idea. He has no clue. Do you know how to get to the back way? Like, do you know from here you have to cross thousands of miles and kilometers of desert to get to Libya and then the Mediterranean? He doesn't even know what a desert is. I'm like, it's more desert. He doesn't know, you know? So how are you going to survive in these harsh conditions if you haven't actually just Googled what a desert is and how I can survive in it, right? Knowledge. I said, all right, let's say, inshallah, you make it to Libya. Do you speak any Arabic? Because you pray five times a day. No, 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 not a single word of Arabic. Okay. I don't know how you're going to survive there. And then let's say you make it to the, to the, to the sea. You get on the boat. Can you swim? Nope. swim. <laughs> but inshallah, I will make it. All right. So I said, do you not watch TV? The boats sink, the ship comes. You can't swim 10 meters to save yourself. Let's say you make it to Italy. You arrive there. You think they're going to just welcome everybody in? No. You're going to sit in, in, a, in a camp for months, maybe a year, with a lot of bad uh, you know, environment, malnutrition, hygiene, all that. And eventually, who are they going to take in? They don't want liabilities. They're going to take in people who have a skill. You are sitting here. Your contractor is teaching you how to tile. And you don't care about that. All you care about is the attire and you landing in Italy. I have nothing against migration. My great-grandfather came here. But wherever you are, you owe it to yourself to add knowledge. Passion alone is not enough. You have to add knowledge because that knowledge, when you get there, will help you do something. You can work. In fact, I think plumbers, carpenters, tilers are highly paid in Europe because the Europeans don't want to do those jobs. Right? So I just share this story to say um, passion alone is not enough. You have to add, value. You have to add, add, add knowledge and learn something. Um, let me share a bit about myself. I've been talking a lot about passion. Um, I think Mr. Njai mentioned that MFH Group, some of you have heard of that, is the umbrella company behind uh, Sunyu Care. All of you know Sunyu Care, LG, uh, Banjul Pharmacy, King Food, right? You've heard of brands like Souvenir Paints, uh, Munchy Biscuits. Most of you have heard of that. Foster Clark, Tiara Drinks, and, and so on. There's a lot of products out there that we do. It's a 52-year-old company. Um, my dad started from a very, very young age. Um, in fact, he discovered the passion of selling. And I'll tell you how, but just to say that he's one of the best salespeople I've ever met. I look up to him for that. He can sell you anything. And he doesn't do it from 8 to 5. He does it at night, in the morning, because he's passionate about it. But do you know what drove him to discover that passion? Poverty. He did not want to stay poor when he was young. He had to leave school. And poverty drove him to have to figure out how to make money. And eventually he discovered he loves and he's good at selling things. Until today he wants to sell, even though he's retired. Um, but poverty drove him to discover that he's really good at selling something. Okay? Maybe if he wasn't that poor, he wouldn't have discovered that passion. So you can discover your passions anywhere. Fast forward. Um, Today, my father has retired. Uh, today, we're, we're one of, I would say, the big companies in Gambia. We employ 180 employees. We're very structured, very organized. We, we are, I mean, starting from myself, we're passionate about what we do. Uh, I'll, I'll share my story. When I came back from university uh, in 2003, 
I, um, before coming back, I, I was very passionate about technology, right? Gadgets, electronics. It's something I really enjoyed, enjoyed uh, growing up. Uh, so my dad said, okay, you know what? Just start with the LG business. Let's start you there instead of starting you with everything. And um, I think I met Uncle Taf then. I remember meeting him very early in the morning at different sites, whether it was the AU project. And before that, I was this young, dynamic, I'm still young, by the way, a young, dynamic, um, I'm uh, very passionate about applying first what I learned in uni. I'm like, you know, why am I here? But also, I loved electronics, I loved technology. And people saw that in me. And people wanted to connect with me because of that. People who wanted advice about any kind of consumer electronics called me on Sundays. And I didn't think of it as work. I didn't get bothered. I was happy that people actually trusted in me. And all that was because of that passion I had for this. But eventually that developed into other things. I realized that when I went out there to meet people, to meet customers, to serve them in the field, not in my office. I didn't have an office for nine years. When I went out there and I served people and I advised them honestly, I didn't just make up a story to make a sale. I was honest with them. If somebody says I need a 24,000 BTU AC, I could have made the big sale. I said, no, you don't need that. You need a smaller one. That's honesty, right? Um, but what I, what I realized is I was enjoying myself. When I could meet Uncle Tuff and leave that meeting, and adding value to something that he's trying to do, I felt good. I started discovering this new passion of, if you make other people happy, it makes you happy. That's one of the reasons I do this, by the way. If you add value to people's lives, you feel good. How many of you will help a blind man cross the street? Everybody, right? Even if no one is looking, right? Even if there's no social media to take a photo of you, and how many likes you're gonna get? You will help a blind person cross the street. Why? We all have it in us. This is, this is natural. Because you want to add value to that person. And by doing that, you feel better. And the same thing in business or the same thing. My son, I remember my son asked me a question once that, teach me how to make money. And I didn't know what to answer. Instantly I said, do something people like. But then it hit me, that's the reality. Do something people like or appreciate or add value to other people's lives. So at MFH Group, our vision has always been uh, and simply is adding value to our employees and customers' lives in everything we do. Okay? So I discovered that passion through being on the ground with, with, with the clients and, and making sure I can add value to their lives. And it was purely about being honest. It's not, it wasn't about money. Money comes after you do that, that stuff. Let me share with you a bit about my chocolate story. Some of you, who knows here that I make chocolate? Has anyone heard of the Gambian chocolate? If you've heard of your Gambian chocolate, put your hands up, please. Show me you're still awake. One, only? Two? I have some chocolate with me. Anyone? No, I'm kidding. Um, I, I, I shared the story briefly. Uh, I'm not going to go through the details. Um, because it, this story is pure passion. This is not about money, about nothing else but pure passion. But something just landed in front of me and I took advantage of it. And that's where opportunity meets you if you're awake. If you're sleeping, opportunities pass in front of you. But if you open your eyes and ears and be curious, things come along every single day that you can make use of. So somebody gave me, one of my employees gave me a, a plant about 15 years ago. He said, hey, here, this is a cocoa plant from Ghana. And I didn't know what it was, I had no clue. I just put it in my garden among the other trees we had, a lot of exotic stuff. And eventually the, this, this tree grew and grew and had fruit on it. And um, they called them cocoa pods, cocoa pods. Actually, I have some. I'll give away some of these today. This is a cocoa pod, right? In this, in this a couple of years in when we had this, we cracked it open. And what you see inside is a lot of beans uh, just like Kaaba, surrounded with this white sweet pulp. You suck the pulp, it's very nice, but you cannot eat the bean. But that bean is what makes chocolate eventually. Uh, but I never thought anything out of it until about four years ago, four and a half years ago. I was again walking in my garden, looking at this tree full of cocoa pods. And it was not seasonal, by the way. It's not seasonal. It has fruit all year round, unlike mangoes. And I thought to myself, either I cut this tree or I do something with it. Luckily, I didn't cut it. 
uh, something told me, okay, let me go back and Google Ghana and Coco. And once I put that search, the doors opened. I was curious. The first thing I read was 70%, 70 percent of the world's chocolate comes from West African cocoa, mainly Ghana and Ivory Coast. 70 percent, 70. And this thing was growing on my tree every day. I'm like, wait a minute, let me Google the value of chocolate, right? And from there, I kept researching, and then it was around Valentine's time. I'm like, okay, let me do something special for my wife. You know, ladies, you love chocolate, trying to be romantic. Um, yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody's happy there. Some of the men are not happy. But. <laughs> so I'm like, let me do something romantic. What's more romantic than trying to make chocolate from a bean, right? The effort. So I went to Google, looked it up, and I thought, you know, I'm an Ikea kind of guy. Like, if you give me an instruction manual, you can leave me to it. I like building things with my hands. And I didn't have any tools, any machines. I managed to do something that looks like chocolate, but it didn't taste like chocolate. It, tastes, it, it tasted really, really bad, but it looked like chocolate, and I shaped it like a heart. So my wife was happy. She couldn't make it today. I wish my wife was here. Um, my wife was happy. I scored points, so that was done. But then, I wasn't happy. Why? Because I, I, while I was doing this, I was really enjoying it, first of all, but then I'm a perfectionist. I don't give up. We say, okay, wait, if I can turn the bean into something that looks like chocolate, I can make it taste better. So fast forward, every three, four months, once my tree had ripe, this is almost ripe, ripe cocoa pods on it. I'll take them off, about five, six of them. Uh, it's a long process, by the way. You gotta ferment, dry, roast, it's a long process. I will do another batch, try to improve on it. Eventually, I got myself a small machine. And every time I'll tell people like Uncle Taf and other people, hey, try this for me. And some, some were honest, some will tell me, look, Fadi, it's not good. And some will lie to me and tell me, oh, it's, it's okay. And it took two and a half years, two and a half years of me doing this in my kitchen at five in the morning, because I have to go to work, or 10 o'clock at night after my kids sleep. It took two and a half years for someone for the first time telling me, can I have one more bite, right? Because your taste buds don't lie. When you like something, you like it. Imagine two and a half years of pure passion. I did not have to do this. Even till today, I don't have to do this. But it's the passion, first of all, for, the, for making chocolate. I was really enjoying it. It's really fun. For those of you who haven't tried it, you're welcome to join and come and see how we do it. It's really exciting. The smell, the taste, everything. But also the passion I have for this country, my home. While I was making chocolate, I kept promoting the story of Coco, that guys, Coco can grow here. No one ever knew that. Uh, my story has been on, of course, local news, but also Radio France and BBC Africa. It's all on the Facebook page. If you go to FH Bites, that's the name of the chocolate, FH Bites. You can see everything there. But this is a brief story of my chocolate. Uh, today, this chocolate is still being handmade. I have someone helping me, of course. Finally, I trained someone to do it too. Uh, we actually are selling it at a few supermarkets. And this is pure passion. So what do you do when people want to pay for your passion? You sell it, right? Okay. Um, before I, I end, let me just say that this story of chocolate has shown me that passions evolve. You can have multiple passions at the same time. Um, you just have to experiment with things and you'll eventually land on something you like. Okay? I'm gonna give away some of these. Uh, do we have a mic? All I need from you is to tell me what you're passionate about in one or two lines, quickly. Okay, I am Fatima Kebe. I'm a poet, a public speaker, a debater, and a writer. So I am passionate about journalism and writing. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Here, you may not know what to do with this. I'll give you some tips. When you crack it open, there's a lot of beans in this. Suck the pulp, enjoy the sweet pulp, and then plant the beans. If you need advice, go to FH Bites and send us a message. We'll show you how to plant the beans and share the story. Okay? You owe it to Gambia to share the story. Anyone else? I have two more. Okay, hello. 
Uh, my name is Fadma Jaite. I am here with Auntie Yasin, Mom Yasin. Um, I currently work at Starfish International. And I think uh, when I started Starfish, I started out as service as well, but along the way I found my passion as well. And now my passion is in community development. Um, it is in forming relationships with people. Um, it is in educating girls. And uh, I think I also like, I don't know, designing stuff. So even like with my, with my hair, I don't know, I started locks, but every time it's like, one way, so you see all sorts of things with my hair all the time. So I like designing as well. Thank you. Thank you. And please, please share the story and encourage people to plant this fruit. By the way, the health benefits of cocoa are massive. You can Google the health benefits of cocoa. That's why they say dark chocolate is healthier for you. One more. Yes. Salaam uh, alaikum. My name is Demba Waiba. Uh, I'm studying journalism, but I'm very passion, uh, passionate about. Uh, Growing plants. Look, okay, agriculture. Yeah, yeah. agriculture. I'm a, I was an agricultural scientist. So naturally, I'm passionate about growing crops. That's great. Well, there you go. You can, you can plant some of this. We will always have more. Send us a message, FH Bites. You can always come and see how we make chocolate. And if we have more cocoa pods, for sure. I want this to spread in this country. So one day Gambia can export cocoa, just like other countries in Africa. Um, let me end by, by, um, by, by, uh, by saying that, you know, uh, and I mentioned earlier that I, I, I do, I'm here because I'm passionate about sharing the little I know about this world, learning from you guys, learning from other speakers, um, uplifting others. I, I want you all to keep this in mind, and I, I see that the, I, I don't see that much in Gambia. We don't celebrate other people, right? Please do, because if you uplift other people, you end up reaping the benefits too, right? Keep that in mind. You can research this topic. But if you're just jealous and you don't want other people to, to be successful, you're also hurting yourself at the end of the day, okay? So this is why I do what I do. And um, if I'm going to leave you guys with, with one uh, one passion, among all passions, try to have passion to be a better human being every single day. And that's my, that's my number one passion. Every day I wake up early, I tell myself, what am I going to do today or learn today that makes me better than yesterday? So the passion to be a better human being, whether it's honesty, discipline, productivity, whatever you want to do, just try to be better every single day. Right? Mr. Jai, thank you so much. And thank you all for listening.